Hello, this is Andrew. Today we have the um, Garmin Edge 530, which is um, one of Garmin's newest uh, cycling computers. We're going to unbox it and then uh, kind of walk through um, the setup process. Go ahead and get that open. Here's the device. It uh, looks a little bigger than the um, 520, but we'll compare in size and weight in uh, just a bit. All right, so let's turn on the scale actually. So we have some mounting clips and the uh, Garmin tether. I generally like to use these tethers because you never know when it's going to bounce off. Let's see how much that weighs. Nothing. All right, that's great. And then these are different sized uh, rubber grommets for the um, incredibly oversized and overweight Garmin mount, which comes with it. Let's see how much that bad boy weighs. 43 grams. It's a lot. Uh, it does have some kind of cool features that you can connect things to the bottom of it, which is neat. And then I believe this Garmin, via these ports here, uh, supports a, um, a battery that you can kind of connect to the bottom of this, but you would need to replace the um, center bit here in order to make that work. And then these guys go inside of here to um, attach to your handlebars. But that, of course, assumes that you have round handlebars, which I don't. Um, at least not on my main bike. Um, so this is useless to me. And then there are a whole bunch of different stem mounting options. Looks like you get two of these stem, or I guess you could use these on a handlebar too if you wanted to, with uh, one of these guys. And then it just kind of attaches with the rubber bands. So we'll grab two of the larger rubber bands. And that is nine grams. All right, so let's see what all this stuff. Oh, and yeah, you get a micro USB cable. It would be really nice if they um, went with C, much more convenient and uh, hardy, but it is what it is. So let's, uh, let's just scooch over. And then 77, and then I have a 520 plus, a Garmin 5, Edge 520 plus, which was 63, and the Wahoo Element Bolt, 61, and then you can kind of see relatively how the size, the relative size of the uh, 530 compared to these other devices. So it's a little bit longer. Um, to be about the same width as both of these devices, but we'll get some quick measurements as well. So, 83, 51.6, and 16.3. So, we've got Looks like the buttons are pretty consistent with what was on older Garmin devices. Power, page up, page down, uh, the OK, the back, and then the um, start, pause, or activities, and then a lap button down there. One nice thing about the 530 is that they've moved the charging port to the bottom of the device instead of on the back of the device. And I actually like this this guy little cover for that a lot better than the cover for this because it doesn't like to stay open and it's also kind of a pain to get back on there to seal it properly to make it um, uh, water resistant again uh, as you can see these the mount itself is identical except with the um, little contacts here for the charging so anything any any uh, Garmin mount should work with the 530. So let's see if we have a charge in here. We'll power it up. Let's 
Looks like it came with 82% battery, which is great. And then we'll just quickly walk through the setup. Oh yeah, sorry, it's not touchscreen. All right, so I have a phone here, it's a Nexus 5, and we'll quickly walk through the um, setup on the phone as well. So, the Plus, and it found it right away, which is very convenient. Connect it. That's inconvenient. Let's try that again. There we go. Yes, I want. So when you allow it to access your contacts and use the phone and things, that's how you get um, the uh, connectivity features for text and SMS and all that, or text and phone and uh, most messaging apps also work like uh, Hangouts and things like that to push messages from the phone to the uh, computer, which is pretty slick while you're writing to get the message. You can actually reply to things on the um, uh, from the from the by computer as well. So let's go ahead next. Oh, that's that's right. You can't use the phone to set up the device uh, in a practical way. It's one of the things that annoys me about the Garmin that I really like about the Wahoo devices. And um, we'll get into that a little bit more. Um, when um, we set up the sensors on here, because it's kind of a pain when you um, uh, set up the sensors to rename them. Whereas on the phone, it's really easy, you know, because you have a full keyboard to name all the sensors. And I tend to have a lot of sensors. Okay. Let's get started. So this is one of the features I've been looking forward to the most with the um, uh, Edge 530 is that it has Wi-Fi. So my hope is that it will work like the Bolt in that when I get into a known location where I've set up Wi-Fi, it just synchronizes the um, activity without m me needing to get out my phone and make sure that it's connected to it and then it uses the phone to sync the pro the activity so we'll add a network oh this is i guess where we go back to the um 5:30. be right back So we've connected it to my IoT network. And so that's that. Create courses, set up live track, um, learn about bike alarm. So that's an, a new feature with the 530 and 830 where um, the uh, bike computer can act as kind of like a motion detector, motion sensor alarm. So if you set it in alarm mode and then you walk away from your bike, somebody moves the bike, it makes a loud noise, and then also notifies your phone if you're within range. So I think this is the point where we, oh, it looks like it wants to set up the network again, but we'll skip that because we already did it. Uh, I'll skip that because we already did that. Hopefully it worked. Yeah, so we'll connect some sensors.
So let's wake up our heart rate sensor again. So heart rate. And then we'll get cadence. And uh, hopefully we'll get speed here and power. Just wake that up. All right, so we should get a, have a whole bunch of stuff here. So, cadence. All right, not not a touchscreen. I think it's the, the the size of the screen and the way that it looks. It just begs to be handled. Um, it's interesting. It did not pick up. This is probably my kicker. Show more. Don't know what that is. Oops. All right, I guess we're going to do that again. Check. Just have to be careful not to hit that button, I guess. Heart rate, show more. Or I guess I could just select all. There we go. All right. Yes. All right, so don't mess with your device while riding your bike. All right. That's nice. It does the it uh automatically wants to update um the software version. So we'll go ahead and do that. So it's done updating, and we've just had a little uh, shortcut tip for right now, which I don't really care, but nothing seems to be happening. All right, I guess that's how you get out of that. How do I discard this? Discard ride. Okay, so come online up here for status, and it's a convenient way to calibrate your power meter. Go back. And then down to the menu. One of the things I really would like it is if it was possible for the uh, profiles to sync from old device to new device. Because you spend a lot of time setting up the screens on here, and then when it comes time to change devices, you have to go through all that effort and do it again. And there's a lot of data, different data fields, and since you do it all on the device, it's all done via these buttons and that button. So it's kind of, um, Inconvenient, I think, is the best way to say it. And I, of course, you only do it once or a few times while you're kind of uh, sorting that out when you get the device. But it is a major thing that makes the Element series a lot easier because you manage all the pages on the phone. You can move them up and down, which should control whether or not they display or not. And then um, it's just a lot easier to, to work through the uh, different... Um, uh, data fields that are available. So I'm just going to set up one real quick and then um, I'll do the other ones on my own time. So go to data screens, screen one. 
Um, well, it looks like it's a little bit different this time. So I like lots of data. All right, so that's my layout. I say okay. Select a field to swap, select it again to edit. Okay. So this is quite a bit different than uh, I wonder what's in popular. It's look quite a bit different from um, the way that you set up the 520. And it's actually not, I think it's a little bit better. So it's, not, it's a nice addition from the older uh, computer where you have to set, you set up the pages, like the size of the page, then you go to another page. Now let me show you. So I'm gonna exit out of here. So now, in order to set up the different fields, I would go to field one, field two, and I have to remember where all those fields are in in the layout. So this is actually a, quite a bit of an improvement as far as usability for setting it up. Um, so that's nice. So go ahead and change that. And I'm gonna assume that heart rate is popular because it's pretty important. God, that's tedious. Where's time? Time of day, there we go. Don't, why would I care about calories during the ride? Oh. Normally I put gear combo there, but I didn't add my DI2 system, so I'll have to do that later. Oh, that's interesting. Just flipped. Where oh, I did that? Oh, that's cool. You can change, you can move fields. So I could have put this one there where I wanted it by selecting it, then moving to the place where I want it to go, and then clicking that. That's cool. All right, anyway. I want elapsed time here. And I added power, so I'll put power here. And then average speed. So that's pretty much done for that one. And um, let's get out of here. So there's actually two sensors I forgot to add. So let's go add them. And one of those is pretty important because it's the uh, Varia. And at the moment, the Varia is only supported by Garmin devices, but um, it's supposed to be coming to Wahoo within a year or so. So we'll add a sensor. You have to add the Varia a little bit different than other ones because you, if you try to add it just by radar, just by light, it only adds radar or just light. So you have to search all. So we'll go to the radar. And um, actually, while we're doing this, let me wake up my DI2 system and we want all of them. Add sensors. Yes. Okay, where are we now?
All right, so these are all the different things that you can add to your data fields. I like the battery level. All right, hopefully. Go out of here. And now what should happen is No, I don't want it. Done. All right, so I don't know how I ended up here. But let's get out of here. Done. 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 All right. Okay, ignore the, well, don't ignore the warning. Warning. All right. <clears throat> yes. So I usually leave these by default. And the default is that they switch the, they basically operate these buttons here. But let's get out of here. All right. So I'm going to go back to my profile, my page that I wanted to set up. Go to my data screen. Screen one. And now. Okay. Put my shifters. I won't turn that off. Put the uh, DI2 sh gear there. Not gears. All right. I get somehow I ended up with time of day up here again. I don't want that. I want speed. Apparently I'm going two miles an hour. Done. All right. So I'll set up my other data screens, but that's bas the basic process for doing it. And once you're all set there, then it's just a matter of you know adding all of your sensors. And um, which actually, there's, that's a key difference between some this, the Garmin's, and some other um, bike computers is that it's a big pool of sensors, and um, you can name them. Which is actually, I'll, I'll show you that real quick too. So I just turned off the radar. I got it. So one of the things that I don't really like is that it just shows me the number, the ant ID, which is fine, I guess. But I prefer to have the name. And um, it's kind of inconvenient to do this on the device. So I'm just going to actually let me clear, to clear the name. There we go. And this is my bike. So if you go through this process, you can see how it would be kind of annoying to do this for however many sensors you have. And then one mistake that I've made in the past is that I just assumed that it back would save it, but that's not true. You have to go all the way up here, hit the checkbox to get you to name it. And so then you go through and basically do that for all of the sensors. I think that that's the kicker, but I'm not quite sure. I've only had one heart rate. The bizarre thing is that when I was doing this, it knew the names. 
of the devices. So it's annoying that it didn't use the device name instead of the ant ID. I forget. We're just going to call it ticker. That's Tiger. Oh, whatever. Oh. So it did grab the name, but what's this other heart rate sensor? One thing I wanted to show too is how to set up the auto features. Auto features are really nice because you can have it um, auto lap and then um, you can have it also control the auto pause. And I like to set it at a custom speed at about three, at three miles an hour. And that's per profile, which is really nice. Let's see what else do we have here? Alerts. Yeah, I don't care about any of that. Oh, actually, that's kind of neat. See a uh, heart rate, cadence, power. I don't know what turn around, eat alert. I like that. Enable that. I like it by time. Actually, let's try smart. We'll test that feature out. Smart. Turn on our drink alert. I don't know why you'd ever want to do it by distance. That's um, kind of a ridiculous way to do it. Because if you're climbing, then your distance doesn't mean anything. And if you're versus on, the, on a flat surface, you could go, you know, five times the distance that you would otherwise. Um, so I'm not sure why you'd ever want to do it by distance, but by time is useful, uh, certainly for eating. Um, and then we'll try smart. We'll see what it says. Because that, if that takes weather and elevation and um, humidity and things like that into account, then that would be useful. A show of bike alarm, which is a new feature with the Edge 530. Uh, after turning it on with my mobile device, I pick up the device and carry it for quite a ways before the alarm starts to sound. Um, you can control it completely on the device, but I found it easier to use the mobile for this, although it is a bit fidgety when turning off the, um, the noise, which isn't that loud, but it is kind of annoying. Uh, then after I turn off the noise, the alarm stays on, so I pick up the bike again and carry it a little ways. This time I don't get quite as far before the alarm goes off. And then show the um, basic pin entry, which would turn off the alarm noise as well. It's great that the feature exists. I'm glad it's there. I just wish that there was a way to tweak sensitivity a bit better. So let's wrap up on the Garmin Edge 530. The only major issue I have with it is that the buttons, at least on my unit, suck. They get stuck. They take uh, multiple presses, uh, sometimes very hard presses, to register the press. Um, and I, I think it's very much that the button's getting stuck in the case, and it's probably a um, tolerance thing with the first run of the device. I don't expect that it'll be a problem with um, subsequent devices, but this was the first run, and a lot of times there are these kinds of manufacturing issues. But it is there, and it, the potential exists that it will always be there, um, not just on my unit, but on other units as well. 
Uh, I really like it, the Wi-Fi feature that's been added to the 530 versus the 520 and 520 plus. Uh, this is one of the things that really annoyed me about uh, the 520 plus coming from a Wahoo Element Bolt, where I just kind of pull in, stop the ride, and it just uploads. Um, where it was a lot more involved with the 520 plus. Uh, it does work, and it works most of the time, but sometimes it doesn't work, and I have to go through that process of you know whipping out my phone, connecting to the 530, and then making it sync. And I don't know why that is. Hopefully, it's the kind of thing that gets sorted with a future firmware update. Um, there are a ton of little edge features that make the Garmin Edge 530 really slick. And I don't see these things in some of the other computers that I've used. Uh, things like Find My Edge, uh, Sharp Turn Alerts, which, you know, <laughs> they have value, but uh, Garmin's opinion of what a sharp turn is in mine um, don't always coincide. But it's nice that they're there. The bike alarm feature is nice. The reminders that are there, the Strava segments, the in, the, which are on some other devices as well. Incident detection, which is also on some other devices. And live tracking, which is um, on the Wahoo. Wahoo has this feature as well. And it works about as well as it does on the Wahoo, which is to say it's there and it works kind of, but it isn't super reliable and it drops out. And I think a lot of this is because it's dependent on your phone or the data connection in your phone. So it has to have a constant connection to your phone, sending data to their cloud service. Um, but it's better than nothing. Uh, there are the drink eat reminders and they're pretty neat, but um, they're not so useful to me personally. And I find it super annoying that they take up the whole screen. Um, there's no need for that. The sharp turn alerts don't do that. If you want to remind me something, great, remind me something. But if I'm if I'm looking at a screen and it's a critical moment, and I just don't like it that it takes my attention like that. And I guess it makes sense in some ways that they're they take your attention like that, but it doesn't need to be so in my face. Um, it's just a gentle reminder, or it should just be a gentle reminder. Um, one of the things that kind of annoys me with the Garmin Edge family in general is that it feels old in some ways. And an example of that is like the PC-centric nature of how to get Ride with GPS files onto the Edge. And some of this is just that it Garmin hasn't done an integration with Ride with GPS, but that kind of thing that should be there. Ride with GPS is a major player in this area. Most of the clubs that I've ridden with around here, they they publish Ride with GPS files. Um, there is a Komoot integration. So what my workflow, when I don't connect the Garmin Edge to my computer to copy a FIT file over, a TCX file over, to get a route, um, is to take the that file, put it in Komoot, and then bring it onto the edge using that integration. But that should just be seamless, like it is on, on Wahoo devices. I should just have, a, I connect the accounts, I can just load all my routes straight up from there. I shouldn't have to use a PC. I shouldn't have to use a phone. It should just be there and it should just work. Um, the standout feature, or one of the things that it's a nice to have, but it is, it's also a, a very nice standout feature for the Garmin edges devices in general is that they have Garmin has a rich first party ecosystem with tracking your your rides metrics um, around those rides and a lot of uh, guesses or performance whatever they call it um, like vo2 max your FTP uh, your recovery stuff um, that's really nice that they have that so if you don't want to use a service like Strava or whatever, Ride with GPS, or well, you can't use Ride with GPS, or Komoot, or something like that to track your rides, you can do, use Garmin's service for that. And in many ways, it's richer than some of these other services are there. They're just like Strava just kind of does a guess on power and all that other stuff, but it doesn't guess your FTP, it doesn't guess your VO2 max. Uh, although some of these things, I'm not sure how they work because Garmin's guess for like my FTP doesn't quite jive with um, some of the rides that I've 
uploaded into it, but that's a digression. It is a battery life champ. There is no getting around that. And this is probably one of the things that would make me want to upgrade the from a earlier edge device is that you just get so much battery life. Now it isn't anywhere close to what Garmin claims. Um, I got in my start to when it drops dead testing, 278.57 miles. That's 13.72 hours of moving time with a total on time of 15.67 hours, which is massive. And I never, I haven't done this level of testing with the 520 plus, but I know it is so much more, probably at least 30% more, maybe double the battery life that I get with my 520 plus. And it's so much more responsive while you do that or while you're using it. And those two things more than anything else with the 530, I think make it potentially worth the upgrade from the 520 or the 520 plus. I'm not totally sold on that, but if battery life is something that you need, like if you do a lot of really long rides or a lot of um, uh, self-assisted rides where you can't uh, charge it, self-supported rides where you can't charge the device, um, having that extra battery life and the ability to charge it on the go with the connector that's in a much more logical place or the battery pack that slides up underneath it. Um, those things are just awesome. So there's a lot of really nice features with the Edge 530 that make it nicer than the 520 and 520 plus. But I think that none of those things really tips it the same way that the battery life and the responsiveness of the unit do, especially the battery life. So hopefully you found this useful. Thanks for watching. Um, it'd be great if you subscribe to the channel and like the video. If you have any questions or comments, you want me to test something, please leave that in the comment below and I will do my best to respond as quickly as I can. Thanks.